Good morning. I call this business meeting to order. Today, the committee will consider four bills, S-2695, Parity for Tribal Law Enforcement Act, S-3857, Hamul Indian Village Land Transfer Act, S-4442, Crow Water Rights Settlement Amendment Act of 2024, and S-4505, OK Owinge, Rio Chama Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024. S-2695 was introduced by Senators Cantwell and Mullen. The bill would improve recruitment and retention of tribal law enforcement officers by making them eligible for certain benefits enjoyed by federal law enforcement, such as pensions, retirement, injury, and death benefits. S-3857 was introduced by Senators Padilla and Butler. The bill would place fee land owned by the Hamul Indian Village into trust to provide housing, essential community services, and access to the tribe's cultural landmarks. S-4442 was introduced by Senators Tester and Danes. This bill would amend the Crow Tribe Water Rights Settlement Act of 2010 to enable the Crow Tribe to complete clean water and energy development projects as part of its original water rights settlement and deliver piped water to community members on the reservation. S-4505 was introduced by Senators Heinrich and Lujan. The bill would resolve the OK Owinge Pueblo water rights claims in the Rio Chama stream system in New Mexico. The bill ratifies and authorizes funding for the water settlement agreement between the tribe, the state of New Mexico, the city of Española, and five Asequia associations. I will now turn to the vice chair for her opening statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you noted, the bills on the agenda, you've covered the specifics, so I'm not going to repeat what you've covered, but I do want to note a few details about one of the bills that we're considering. This is the Parity for Tribal Law Enforcement Act. This is S-2695. I do appreciate uh, Senators Cantwell and Mullen for their work on the bill. Um, I think it's uh, unfortunate Senator Cantwell can't be here today to thank her in person for her leadership on this, but we'll do that for the record. There is no doubt that tribal law enforcement agencies face extraordinary challenges, and we need to do more as a Congress to help. This bill intends to improve hiring and increase retention for tribal law enforcement officers to keep Native communities safe. Numerous commissions and government reports have documented the need for additional resources for law enforcement in Native communities. This is true across the board, including in PL 280 states like mine. In order to ensure that we do not leave behind tribes in PL 280 states on this issue of law enforcement, Senator Cantwell and I have an amendment to S-2695 that we're going to be considering today that would make officers that are funded through COPS or other DOJ grants eligible for the parity that we're extending to tribes that receive BIA 638 funding. We're still working through this issue. I recognize we may need further amendments to the text of the bill, but we didn't want to prevent this important measure from moving forward today in committee. So again, my thanks to Senator Cantwell for partnering with me on this amendment and continuing to work with me to ensure that we get it right going forward so all tribes have needed law enforcement, including those in PL 280 states. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I turn it back to you. Thank you, Vice Chair, and we thank uh, Senator Cantwell. She is chairing the whole uh, Commerce Committee at the exact same time as as our committee, that's, otherwise she would certainly be here. Um, before I ask senators if they want to make an opening statement, the appropriate time to make a, a comment on any amendment that you may have or on your particular bill would be as we take them up. Um, but having said that, are there any senators wishing to make an opening statement? Uh, Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you. I, I want to thank uh, Chairman Schatz and Vice Chair Mikowski uh, for the bills that are before us today. But also, I do want to talk about uh, Senator Cantwell and Senator Mullen's parity for Tribal Law Enforcement Act. Um, I, I have heard directly from our tribes in Nevada, this bill is exactly what tribal law enforcement need to maintain consistent and effective agencies. Not only are, are there unique challenges to attracting qualified officers at tribal law enforcement agencies, listen, they also struggle to compete with other law enforcement agencies to retain these officers. Um, our Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribes Police Department has told me that the lack of comparable retirement benefits, it's the number one reason why they lose officers after their first couple of years. So uh, this bipartisan Tribal Law Enforcement Act will absolutely improve uh, tribal police officer recruitment, retention rates, while also streamlining their ability to enforce federal law. I thank you again uh, for hearing this bill amongst the many that we are having today, and thank you. Senator Tester. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you and Chair Murkowski for uh, your team's effort to move forth for critical pieces of legislation. 
And I want to go a little bit further. I, I don't know that Indian country has ever had uh, a bigger advocates sitting in the chair and ranking position of this committee. I appreciate your work over the last uh, over the last couple of years. It's been exemplary. Um, I also want to thank uh, the chairman of the Crow Tribe, Chairman White Clay, for his leadership. Um, the Crow Water Rights Settlement Act is a straightforward bill that will ensure that Crow Tribe has the tools and infrastructure they need to deliver clean water to its communities. It amends the original Crow Water Settlement Act that Congress passed back in 2010, a bill that Max Baucus and I had, that would provide the tribe some additional flexibility to develop water infrastructure that is most more cost effective and it works better for the tribe and it works better for the region. It will also bolster energy development by extending the timeline for the tribe to develop hydropower on the Yellowtail, Yellowtail after, da, after Bay Dam, which will provide clean energy and will boost the economy in nearby communities. This committee is also considering an amendment for this bill today. This amendment will make two improvements to the bill. Here's what they do. The first Im improvement ensures that funds used to prioritize water development over the land acquisition. It means water over land. The second improvement ensures that funds in each settlement account are spent as intended and not transferable from one account to another, just common sense. And lastly, as I noted at the hearing for this bill, we're doing all of this with no additional cost, uh, without changing any existing water rights and without reopening the settlement. Uh, today is a good day for the Crow Tribe and I would urge my colleagues to support this measure. And I wanna thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Tester, Senator Daines. Yeah. Chairman Chats, thank you, and Ranking Member Murkowski as well, uh, for including this important bill in the markup. Senator Tester's comments are, were exactly right. Uh, here's what happened. Back in 2010, Congress passed the Crow Tribe Water Settlement. And since then, the good news is the tribe and BOR have been working to implement it, and they found a better way to do it that will lower cost and actually be much less complicated, deliver higher quality water to their people. Because unfortunately, that original water project that was envisioned in that 2010 bill was found to be infeasible. And it's something we've learned now on these compacts is it's probably best not to be overly prescriptive in the compact around how to deliver the water, just stay focused on outcomes and let the tribes and the engineers figure out the best way to do that. That's why we're making this minor adjustment to the bill. It's gonna provide a cost-effective, low-impact water system, and it also extends a very important hydropower project authorization on the reservation. It does not add any additional cost. In fact, it probably will lower cost. It does not alter any existing water rights, and importantly, it does not open up the compact, which has been agreed to by the state of Montana, the Crow Tribe, and the federal government. So this should be a pretty easy layup this moment, this makes a lot of sense. Let's get this done. I look forward to the committee's consideration of my Crow Revenue Act in the near future. These bills provide certainty and support for communities on the reservation. Chairman Schatz, thanks for your help. Thank you. Um, we'll now move to the agenda. Um, first, some housekeeping matters related to amendments on today's agenda. <clears throat> Amendment numbers KAT 24619, 24626, and 24629 were not timely filed. Our rules provide for a waiver of the 48-hour rule for filing amendments in advance of a business meeting. I've waived the rule for untimely filed amendments and the vice chair has concurred. So turning to today's business, without objection, I call up S2695, Senator Cantwell and Senator Murkowski filed amendment number KAT24619. This amendment makes technical corrections to terminology and cross-references to federal retirement programs. It also clarifies that the Department of the Interior's Retirement Benefits Program is voluntary on a tribal officer by officer basis, that tribal officers with salaries paid in whole or part by COPS grants or other DOJ grants are eligible, and that tribal officers may participate if their respective Indian tribe has a mandatory retirement age that exceeds that of federal officers. Senator Cantwell has business in the Commerce Committee at this time, so she asked me to enter her written statement on the bill and amendment into the record. Senator. Murkowski, uh, would you like to make any additional uh, comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I included those in my opening remarks, so thank you, and I uh, would hope that members are able to support the bipartisan amendment. 
Thank you very much. Any final comments? Uh, hearing none, and without objection, the committee will vote on amendment number KAT24619. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it, and the amendment is adopted. If there is no further debate, then without objection, the committee will vote to report 2695 as amended. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it, and 2695 is reported with an amendment. Without objection, I call up uh, S3857 on behalf of Senator Padilla. I filed an amendment in the nature of a substitute, number KAT24626. The ANS revises the introduced bill to account for parcels that have already been taken into trust by BIA and provides for reaffirmation of their trust status. The ANS would also authorize an additional trust acquisition of 1.1 acres that is subject to a pending land swap between the Hamul Indian Village and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Uh, hearing no discussion and without objection, the committee will vote on amendment number 24626. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted. If there's no further debate, then without objection, the committee will report, uh, will vote to report uh, S3857 as amended. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and 3857 is re ordered reported with an amendment in the nature of a substitute. Without objection, I call up S4442. Senator Tester filed an amendment in the nature of a substitute, number KAT24629. And now I'll recognize, oh, no, Senator Tester, I think you have already described the bill. Um, if there are no further uh, comments or um, discussion, if there's no further discussion, the committee will vote on amendment number KAT24629. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted if there is no further debate. Then without objection, the committee will vote to report S4442 as amended. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it and S4442 is ordered reported with an amendment. And lastly today, without objection, I call up S4505. No amendments have been filed. Uh, Senator Lujan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you both to you and to the vice chair uh, for today. I'm proud to be the co-lead with Senator Heinrich of the Okeowinga Water Rights Settlement, which would ratify the water rights between the Okeowinga Pueblo, the state of New Mexico, the city of Española, and five Asequia associations and resolve the tribe's water rights in the Rio Chama stream system in New Mexico. When Governor Phillips was last before this committee to testify in support of this legislation, he reminded us of the deep cultural and religious connections between bosques and our communities. This piece of legislation is part of living up to our trust responsibility to the tribes and is part of the water rights restoration that needs to begin in the Rio Chama and the Bosque. I welcome the committee's consideration of this legislation and look forward to enact it into law as well as restoring the health of the river and the Bosque for the Pueblo and for other parties. I yield back. Thank you very, very much, Senator Lujan, for your leadership on this important bill and th these important issues. If there's no further discussion, then without objection, the committee will vote to report S4505. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it, and S4505 is reported uh, favorably. I want to thank the members uh, for getting the business of our committee completed expeditiously today, and I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make technical and conforming changes. There being no objections or further business before the committee, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>